So on this slide, we discuss vanishing theorems. So we start with V, a separated algebraic variety of dimension n, and F be a quasi coherent sheaf on this separated algebraic variety. So again, V is a separated algebraic variety of dimension n and F is a quasi coherent sheaf on this variety. Then it's cohomology groups. These cohomology groups H, I, V, F, these are zero for all I which are greater than N and N is the dimension of this separated algebraic variety. So if you exceed the dimension, the cohomology groups will be automatically zero. So we prove only for V a projective algebraic variety, yeah, not the general case. We just take V as a projective algebraic variety. So for proof, notice that dimension of V is N. Now you cover V with this open cover UI and this there are N plus 1 sets 0, 1, 2, 3 all the way to N which cover V. Now by definition of check cohomology we have this CI this complex is 0 for I greater than N. You cannot form like intersections for more than N. And that's why in the definition we had ci equals to 0 for i greater than n. And this is really easy now because then you just get cohomology groups as 0. Since the complex is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 so their cohomology groups will also be 0, 0, 0, 0. After obviously for i greater than n. So the idea is how do you find the sets ui? So what we say is these ui are nothing but complement of a hyperplane. So each set ui is a complement of a hyperplane say hi. So there are sets i is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 all the way to n as you can see in the open cover and we have h0, h1, h2 all the way to n hyperplanes and none of these hyperplanes meet v. So V intersection H I is a null set. So we can now see that the complements of these hyperplanes will cover V since, since none of these hyperplanes meet V. Um, in a moment we will recall again what a hyperplane is but uh, now you can just go with the flow. Now all we need to do is find these hyperplanes. If we find this hyperplane, we take its complement that gives you a affine cover. From that affine cover you find out the check cohomology and we have already talked that the check cohomology does not depend upon the cover. So we are done if we find these hyperplanes. Complement of these hyperplanes are open sets and then we will have the 0, 1, 2, 3 all the way to n sets and that will solve our problem. Now we will prove this by induction. On this slide now we just try to figure out what exactly we are trying to say. So this V is embedded in some space Pn and we want these hyperplanes H0, H1, H2, H3 all the way to Hn where this subscript n last is nothing but the dimension of V. So we see that all these hyperplanes are of co-dimension 1 or of dimension n minus n minus 1. Yeah, where capital N is some big space. Now let us uh, again mention that V intersection H i is null set. Let us see this in the form of some example. So say V is of dimension 2 and it lies in this space P5. So capital N is 5. So then we will have these three hyperplanes H0, H1, H2. Again, 2 is the dimension of V. Now these three hyperplanes will lie in P cube. And we will see that the, the dimension of each of this hyperplane is 2. 
and uh, code ammunition is 3 as we have mentioned before that is n plus 1 2 plus 1 3 and therefore the dimension is 5 minus 3 2. Now we recall what a hyperplane is. So a projective space you can decompose it as a affine space of size n which I have written as un. I should write it as a n actually but now I have written it as un but so yeah so this affine space is un which should be actually a n union the projective space. So the now I am just writing decomposition the first part is x i not equals to 0 and then you divide throughout by x i you get this a n space and then the second part is p n minus 1 which is defined by the hyperplane x i equals to 0. So these three hyperplanes you can say h0 is x0 equals to 0, h1 is x1 equals to 0, h2 is x2 equals to 0. So notice that the dimension of this hyperplane is n minus 1. Now this is important to notice that see if you are in PQ, I said the dimension of h0, h1 and h2 will automatically be 2. Now you need to understand that how these hyperplanes are separate lying in the space P3 not P5 and that is made precise by the second point which you can find on, find on page 26 of uh, Daniel Perrin's book. So if dimension of V plus dimension of W is greater or equal to N, the projective space is P superscript N, then you have some intersection with some dimension here dimension v plus dimension w minus n. Yeah, So this result we have mentioned before and we say that any two lines in P2 intersect that is two parallel lines in P2 intersect. So you can see that 1 plus 1 minus 2 will give you 0 so dimension 0 is nothing but a point. On this slide we prove the result by induction. So for n equals to 1 there is nothing to prove. So if we have a projective variety of dimension 1 we will have to have the hyperplane as the null set. So for n equals to 1 there is nothing to prove. Now for induction we assume it is true for n minus 1 and then we need to pass on to n. Uh, so we assume that the result holds for n minus 1 this is capital n minus 1 that is the space in which v is embedded and then we need to pass on from n minus 1 to n now when we pass on from n minus 1 to n we need to add a hyperplane to it so if we find this hyperplane we will be done. The inductive step would be complete. So let us see it as an example. We just copy the example from the previous slide. We have a variety V embedded in P5 of dimension 2. So we will have P cube and three hyperplanes. So P cube comes from 5 minus 2 and these three hyperplanes you can see the dimension of V is 2 which is indicated in the three hyperplanes H0, H1 and H2. So complement of it will form three open sets as the cover. Now we have just written the equations of the hyperplane and the dimension of HI is 2 Yeah, because uh, it is one less, this, less than the projective space it is embedded in and these hyperplanes are in space P3. Now we want to pass on to P6. So again V is cons uh, fixed variety so dimension of V is as 2 and we have P4 here we want to increase this opposite space to P4. So we have to add this additional hyperplane H3. Yeah, So H0, H1, H2 are again defined as previously is x0 equals to 0, x1 equals to 0 and x2 equals to 0. We need to find this new hyperplane h3. So if we find this hyperplane we are done. So we write this variety v as 
decomposing it into its irreducible components. Now obviously r is less than or equal to dimension of v. Now you pick a point xi in some irreducible component vi. Now we are working in the projective space P superscript capital N. So the points are of this form xi0, xi1 all the way to xin. Now we want to find a set of hyperplanes which do not contain this component vi. So we will denote the set of hyperplanes by this omega i and this set of hyperplanes is written as k equals to 0 to n ak xik not equal to 0. So obviously this does not contain the does not contain the point xi and thus the all the points xi and vi. Notice that this is a very important characterization of hyperplanes. And uh, the hyperplane is nothing but the projective space of the dual space. Um, now this is another form of writing hyperplanes. And uh, you need to memorize this, that this is how also you can write hyperplanes as a linear equation not equal to zero. This you probably would have seen in uh, uh, calculus courses. So now corresponding to each variety you have the set of hyperplanes which, which do not contain that irreducible set. So corresponding to each of these vi you have omega i. So you have omega 1 corresponding to v1, omega 2 corresponding to v2, all the way omega r corresponding to vr. So all these omega i will give you a linear equation. Now you will have r linear equations but there are capital N variables and r is less than or equal to n. So you do have a solution. In fact you will have most likely more than one solutions. So you have a solution set which is definitely more than yeah because we will take r as strictly less than n because if r is equal to capital N then the hyperplane is just the null set. So if r is less than n we will have omega containing some hyperplane. So omega is the intersection that is the solution set of all these r linear equations. And you just take any h in this solution set and that will complete the inductive step.